modern gardening often races for quick fixes, bags of synthetic fertilizer, soil testing gadgets, and the latest microbial inoculants that promise miracles in a month. But sometimes, the most powerful solutions are the ones passed down for generations. What if the answer to your dead, compacted, lifeless soil wasn't in a bottle or a bag, but in the ancient wisdom of indigenous American agriculture? Across North and Central America, indigenous communities cultivated vibrant, abundant gardens long before tractors and commercial compost. These weren't just gardens, they were living systems, sustained by deep observation, spiritual connection to the land, and regenerative cycles that worked with nature rather than against it. If your soil feels exhausted, compacted, or stripped of life, it might be time to learn from the first stewards of this land. In this video, we're diving deep into seven powerful indigenous American soil revival techniques, methods that have stood the test of time and are making a major comeback among today's regenerative farmers. These aren't gimmicks. They're practical, proven systems rooted in respect for the land. Let's explore how these traditions can help you restore your soil from the ground up. No-till the foundation of respectful soil stewardship. Indigenous communities across the Americas rarely tilled the soil. Why? Because tilling, especially repeated mechanical tillage, destroys soil structure, burns out organic matter, and breaks up the very fungal networks that plants depend on. Instead, they practiced what today we call no-till or minimal disturbance farming. Rather than turning soil over, seeds were placed directly into the ground using tools like the digging stick or planting stick. This preserved the integrity of the soil layers, protected moisture, and created an ideal environment for microbes, fungi, and earthworms to thrive. If your soil feels lifeless and crusted on top, it may be suffering from years of disruption. Try planting through layers of mulch or use a broad fork instead of a tiller to loosen soil without destruction. Cover cropping the forgotten fertility builders. You might think cover crops are a new trend in modern permaculture, but indigenous farmers have been doing this for centuries. The Haudenosaunee, or Iroquois, for instance, practiced what's now known as the Three Sisters Method, growing corn, beans, and squash together. The beans fixed nitrogen, the corn provided a vertical structure, and the squash shaded the soil, preventing erosion and suppressing weeds. But beyond this famous trio, many communities planted legumes and ground covers during fallow seasons to rebuild soil between harvests. These plants added biomass, fed soil microbes, and created a living mulch that prevented the sun and wind from stripping away nutrients. Try planting clover, vetch, or even buckwheat in your off-seasons to emulate this timeless technique. Agroforestry farming with trees, not against them. In many indigenous systems, agriculture didn't mean clear-cutting forests. Instead, trees were seen as allies. They provided food, medicine, and critical ecosystem services like shade, wind protection, and soil stability. Agroforestry, the integration of trees and shrubs into cropping systems, wasn't a concept. It was simply how land was managed. In the Amazon, for instance, Indigenous people created entire forest gardens filled with layers of productive plants that mimicked natural forests. The roots of trees stabilized soil and pulled up deep nutrients while their leaves dropped organic matter that turned into humus. Even today you can adopt this method by interplanting fruit trees with your vegetable beds or using living hedgerows as mulch sources and windbreaks. Controlled burning has long been misunderstood in modern land management, often associated with destruction. But for indigenous communities across California, the southeast, and the plains, fire was a tool of renewal. When managed carefully, small, low-intensity burns cleared out dead plant matter, returned nutrients to the soil, and encouraged the growth of fire-adapted native plants. These burns also helped maintain grasslands and prevent the dominance of invasive species. While open burning isn't feasible or legal in most gardens today, the principle still applies. You can mimic these effects by using charred plant material, also known as biochar, 
or by safely burning crop residues in a fire-safe container and returning the cooled ash to your soil. The result? Increased pH, improved cation exchange, and stronger microbial balance. Sacred reciprocity means treating the soil as a living relative. One of the most profound differences between indigenous and industrial agriculture is, honestly, the mindset. Many indigenous traditions view soil as a living being, not just a medium to grow crops. In this worldview you don't extract from the land, you actually enter into relationship with it. Offerings are made before planting, and harvest is done with gratitude. Organic matter isn't just dumped on top, but, you know, integrated mindfully to feed the earth as you feed yourself. You're no longer thinking in terms of yield or output, instead you're thinking in terms of harmony. When you approach your soil with this mindset, your gardening habits naturally shift, more compost, more mulch, more observation, and really less forcing things to grow in depleted ground. If your garden soil feels depleted, compacted, or well, dead, the answer isn't always more products, it's more connection. The techniques developed by indigenous American farmers were never about maximizing profit, they were about sustaining life, long term. These methods, no-till planting, cover cropping, agroforestry, controlled burns, sacred reciprocity, biochar-rich composting, and water harvesting, can be just as effective today, whether you're in a raised bed in the suburbs or restoring land in the countryside. At Hydro Haven, we believe in blending ancient wisdom with modern science. And, hey, your garden might be the perfect place to start. So if you found this guide valuable, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to Hydro Haven, and share this with a gardener who's ready to revive their soil the right way, with patience, tradition, and a little help from the past. More soil secrets are coming soon, so stay rooted and stay tuned.